We'd like you to do something now, using your hands. Are you ready? Can you hold up the same number of fingers on your hands? And again, it doesn't have to be the same fingers, just the same number of fingers. Can you hold up the same number of fingers on your hands? That's one way of making half. The band cuts the board into two parts. Here's the first half and the second half. Hmm. And there's another way. That's half and that's half. Are you sure? They don't look like halves. Ah, well, you see, if you turn the board round, that shape is the same as that shape. So there's one half and there's the other half. So they are halves? Yep. Yeah. A band cuts the board in half. Half numbers as well as shapes, like this. Half of four, two, half of eight is four, half of sixteen is eight, oh, and half of two, one. Hmm. Oh, just a minute, this one. Oh. And, uh, oh, half of twelve, six. Oh, here we go, as well. Half of ten, five. Uh, oh, look, here's one. That's uh, it, is it? Yes, yeah, I think so. Ah, what about this? <laughs> Excuse me. Hey, madam. What about that? It's the same chain. Yes, but you see, my arrows go the other way, don't they? Point the opposite direction. My arrow means halving, 
Myro means doubling. Halving? And doubling. Caught you. Oh. Tell you what, look, give me half and I won't tell anybody. Mm, all right. Come on, half. Up there? Mm-hmm. <sighs> Lovely. Thank you, Mary. Okay. Oh, uh, Mary, I'm sorry. Mike was watching. He'd like half as well. Oh, no. Thank you. Um, and the cameraman would like half. <laughs> yes, certainly. Uh -huh. Oh, and the sound man. Oh. Uh, the lighting man. Oh, and the engineer, of course. Uh -huh. Oh, and uh, three props men. Three? Yeah, there's Joe and two of his mates. One, One, two, two, three. Oh, and the cat. What cat? Studio cat, of course. Hmm. Now this is the first part of a story about a rather unusual mathematician. Many years ago, in a far-off land, there lived a mad mathematician. He wasn't really mad. People called him that because he often had unusual ideas. The land was ruled over by a king who was jealous because the mathematician was so popular. One day, he sent a message commanding that the mathematician report to the palace immediately. The mathematician packed a few things in a backpack. If I walk six hours each day, that's 360 minutes, that's uh, 21,600 seconds, and if I make two strides each second, that's uh, 43,200 strides, and as there are about 2,500 strides in a mile, it means I walk about 17 miles each day. Let's see. 68 miles to the palace, so it would take me about four days. He had just worked this out when he caught up with a fellow traveller. Good morning, he said. A lovely morning for walking. I hate walking, said the stranger. As the day goes by, it gets harder and harder. Oh, you should try half-time walking, said the mathematician. To start with, we will walk for 256 minutes, and then we'll have a rest. They sat by a waterfall for their first rest. I'm very tired, said the stranger. I can't walk for 256 minutes this afternoon. Oh, well, that's just it, said the mathematician. We are now going to walk for 128 minutes just half of what we did this morning. Does that mean that after the next rest we only have to walk for 64 minutes? Quite so, said the mathematician. <laughs> and then it's 32 minutes, then 16 minutes. Oh, that's great. Oh, it's getting better all the time. That night the two of them slept out under a large tree. As they lay there the stranger said, yeah. I enjoyed that half-time walking, especially when it got to only one minute between rests. Of course, we needn't have stopped there, said the mathematician sleepily. We could have walked for half a minute, and then a quarter. Hey, said the stranger, could we have gone on forever? But there was no reply. The mathematician had dropped off to sleep. Hmm. Well, I suppose you could go on like that forever. 
Well, yes, you could, but, I mean, how far would you get in half a minute, or a quarter, or an eighth? I mean, eventually it'd just be a tiny split second you'd never get anywhere. There's a puzzle like that. Is there? Hmm. If you put one grain of rice on the first square of the chessboard, mm -hmm. two on the second, four on the third, yeah. and you carry on doubling like that all the way to the end, how much rice will you need? 64 squares altogether. Mm -hmm. What's the problem? Well, you work it out. All right. You start with one. One, yes. Mm -hmm. and then two. Mm -hmm. Doubled is four. And eight. Mm -hmm. And sixteen. And thirty-two. Uh, Sixty-four. Uh, Hundred and twenty-eight. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> 128. No, actually, 128. it's all right, but hmm? No, because I've given it to the computer to work ah, out. Good idea. Ah, well, you watch this. Yeah, right. Hey, that's an awful lot of rice. <laughs> and that's the number of grains of rice on the last square. Hey, do you realise that's over nine million million million? And to find out the total, you'd have to add up the whole lot. <laughs> you'd never get it on the chessboard. People say there isn't that much rice in all the world. Is that true? Well, that's what I've heard. Hmm. <laughs> Ah, two reds make a pink. So, so the rods tell me that a red is half a pink. Yes. And a light green is half a dark green. And a pink is half a brown. Um. Yes, a white is half a red. The shorter rod is always half the longer rod. They're always of saying half. Here you are, Mary, look at this. Set of halves. Oh, goodbye. Goodbye. That's good, that. Hey, right, one minute. Other. Let's try that. Now, do you think that will be half of that? Mm -hmm.